Metars and TAFs are probably the most confusing thing, or one of the most confusing things when you're studying for your part 107. Uh, luckily, they're not that difficult once you get the hang of it. Um, it's just a text-based code and is just like any other language. Once you understand what you're looking at, it's actually fairly easy. So what we're going to do is walk through one here uh, very quickly and, and you're going to get the idea of what's going on here. So if you join me on aviationweather.gov, you're going to come to the homepage here and just go over up here to METARS. If you click on that and then scroll on down and right here, request METAR data, go to IDs and put in an airport code that's close to you. So I'm actually going to look for uh, KLAX, which is for LAX airport, which is in the international airport in Los Angeles. Uh, so in this case, it's KLAX. There's always a K in front of uh, the, the big airports there. So you could decode it here, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. Uh, you could also include the TAFs, but for right now, we're just going to go over get METAR data. We're just going to go with the simple METAR. So if you look right here, you're going to see a whole bunch of gobbledygook. It looks like what the heck is going on, right? Um, it's not that bad, I promise you. So right away, for drone pilots, we're going to ignore all this right here for remark. RMK is remark. There aren't always going to be things there. Uh, sometimes there is, sometimes there's not. But for us, it doesn't really make much of a difference. Um, and this right here, the A2985 for... Uh, drone pilots, that's not really a big deal either, but it might come up on your test. Uh, this is your altimeter or your pressure reading, and in this case, it's 2985. Uh, in your test, it might actually ask you, depending on the question that you get, what's the standard number that it should be? And it's not should be, but it's talking about sea level, which is 2992. Uh, there's no problems if it says 2985. It depends on elevation and some other things. Um, so just know that, but we're actually really interested in these things from uh, this 16 slash 11 and forward. So let's uh, let's die. Let's pull this apart. Um, so KLAX, we already know this is the location. Uh, this is for LAX International Airport in California. This one here, 312353Z. This is the date and time that the METAR was pulled. Now, METARs are for right now. They're good for about 55 minutes. Every 55 minutes, they're going to reload them. They're going to pull new information. Um, so about every hour, you're going to get a new METAR. TAFs are forecasts. That's actually what they're for, is the forecast, what the F stands for. So we have here 3-1, which is the date, 31st of the current month. So right now, we're in March. So this is March 31st. And this was pulled at 23.53 Zulu time. Aviation uh, pulls its time from Zulu time, which is universal time code, um, which is the prime meridian where uh, longitude is zero in the UK. You have the next thing here is your wind. Um, you have 270, that's your direction. That's coming from the compass. 360 would be um, at north and then 180 would be at south 90 would be east and then 270 is due west so this is coming from the west at nine knots and of course aviation we're measuring everything in knots i'll show you how to convert this into miles per hour in just a second it's very very easy it actually does it for you um, so here we also have the visibility 10 sm uh, it stands for 10 statute miles. For a METAR, you're not ever going to see more than 10 SM. You'll see something below it, but if it says 10 SM, then it's 10 statute miles or more, at least. So then you go into your cloud cover. Right now we have few clouds at 1500 feet. Just ignore this zero. Uh, and then you have 15 here and then just add two zeros after it. So you know that it's few clouds at 1500 feet, overcast clouds at 4,700 feet. So few clouds at 1500 feet, and then above that, there's another cloud layer at 4,700 feet. Almost done, actually, here we go. So we have a 16 degrees temperature in Celsius. In this particular case, it's listed in Celsius. 
Over here, 11 is the dew point. And that's gonna be very important for you to know because it might come up on the test, but as a drone pilot, you need to know that when the dew point and the temperature get close to each other, if they match, if that's in 16, 16, you're gonna have fog. And fog can not just reduce your visibility, it can actually affect your drone in different ways. The TAFs, which we'll look at now, if you look here, just click on include TAF, we're gonna see that same code base. You you wanna pull this apart just like you, you did with the METAR. It's actually not nearly as bad looking. Anyway, it breaks things down for you. So um, let's look at this TAF here. So you have, again, KLAX, we already know what that is. And then right here is, of course, the date and the time. 31st of March, two, uh, two, three, four, three Zulu time. And then right here, you have from when it's from to when it's to, okay? So this actually is 0100 is from the first at midnight, and then it's good until the second, until 6 a.m., okay? 0600 uh, would be 6 a.m on the 2nd of April. So then we're gonna look at um, the knots again. So it's 240 at 09 knots. Um, so the wind has shifted a little bit. It's actually gone from due west to just about, uh, just a little bit southwest. And then you have P6SM. It's not gonna go above that. So it's just like the 10 statute miles for the METAR. Um, if you see P6SM, then it's uh, six statute miles or more. Um, you might see a lower, you might see 4SM, 2SM, something like that. Um, but P6SM is just going to be uh, the maximum you'll see there. And then, of course, you have the few uh, clouds at 1,400 feet and broken clouds at 5,000 feet. That's the initial reading there. But then, because it's a forecast, we need to see additional information. This this next line uh, has... it. it, it you're just gonna read this by itself. This is from uh, four o'clock in the morning. Um, you're gonna have <clears throat> variable winds of three knots. And typically you're gonna only see variable, VRB, um, when it's three knots or less. Um, you won't typically see that if it's higher than that, it'll usually give you a direction. And then you have P6SM, of course you already know what that is, and then the broken clouds at 2,500 feet. So now if you move on to the next one, you're gonna see that it's at the uh, the first, which all of them are on the first, of course, uh, at 1,500 hours, which is at three o'clock in the afternoon. It's giving an 80 degrees at five knots, P6SM, so in the statute miles doesn't change at all here. Um, and then the broken cloud cover does kind of change a little bit. So you have uh, 3,500 feet now instead of the 2,500. You look down at the next one, the direction has changed now. So it's 240 at six knots. The speed has not changed much from five knots to six knots, but the direction definitely has from 80, which is just about east. Now it's at 240, so it's completely shifted direction. And uh, the broken cloud cover has now gone up to 5,000 feet. And then the next one, you can see the shift of the direction is now at 260 at 10 knots. And then uh, the broken cloud cover actually goes up to 25,000 feet. So it's pretty significant. On your test, they might ask you, what's changed in the cloud cover from this point to this point? Or what's changed maybe in the ceiling? Now the ceiling is the cloud layer of broken or overcast cloud layers. You have scattered clouds, you have other cloud types, but a ceiling is based off of the broken or overcast layer. That's important to know too. So now that we kind of ran through this fairly quickly, let's look at decoded, okay? So this is a good way to cheat. And it's not actually cheating. They're giving you the information. This is a government website. Um, and you don't actually have access to this on your test. But if you're studying, this is a really good resource for you to understand and, and try to figure things out because it breaks everything down, just about everything down for you. It doesn't always tell you the remarks, but let's go through this right here. Let's not include the TAF because that's a whole bunch to look at right now. 
So if we're looking at the decoded for Los Angeles International Airport, it tells you that, KLAX. Here's the actual METAR. You have the temperature at 60 degrees Fahrenheit, which is listed at 15.6. It converts it for you. Okay, so we know that this is the 16 right here is going to be that 15.6. It rounds it. And then 11 is 11.1 uh, Celsius, which is 52 degrees Fahrenheit. So uh, the next thing that it actually lists is that temperature, uh, I'm sorry, that pressure, the altimeter, which is that A number, A2985. You can see here, 29.85. And then the winds, it kind of throws everything all over the place. It doesn't do it in the same order in which it's listed, um, but you get the idea. Winds, 270 degrees. You can see it's coming from basically the west. Um, and then you have uh, at 10 miles an hour or nine knots, so then that's whoop, this guy right here. That's the 27009 KT. So that's got to do with this one. And then visibility is 10 or more statute miles. And that's that bit that I was talking about. It's 10 or more if you see 10 SM. The ceiling is at 4,700 feet. That's right here. Now that ceiling is what I was talking about earlier, where it's the broken or overcast layer of clouds. If you see scattered or something else, that doesn't count as a ceiling. Um, that's very important for your test because you'll probably get a question about that um, where they talk about what's changed in the ceiling. Um, so just be aware of that. So our you see how we have the few is 1,500 feet. That's actually lower that's very cl much closer to us than the overcast layer but at 4700 feet but you can see it's listing that as the ceiling okay so a few clouds it's telling you clouds few clouds at 1500 feet above ground level we do almost everything in agl um, overclass cloud deck <clears throat> excuse me at 4700 feet agl okay so that's that's it. I mean, you can keep doing that with uh, including the TAF. You can look through this again. Um, I'll let you go through this. We don't need to decode all this together. Um, I'll just leave that on the screen there so you can pause it real quick if you want to um, and just kind of read through it. One more thing that I want to show you. Let's look at this real quick and uh, go to raw. Uh, because maybe you didn't know what this VRB stood for, okay? it's You're going to have a hard time understanding what all these things are. There's things that I haven't seen much of, and I don't quite remember what they are. So um, I'm going to bring you over to this website. Uh, it's from the FAA website. I'm going to link it down in the description below, as well as uh, Aviation Weather Center. I'm going to put that in the, in the comments below. Sorry, in the description below, uh, you'll have both of those. Um, so we're looking for VRB because what the heck is that? So if you go to this, you're going to see uh, METAR and TAF indicates ICAO weather usage, and you can see what ICAO is up here. Uh, so let's uh, just do a quick search. I'm going to hit Command F on a Mac or Control F on PC and VRB, and you're going to see there's two things. Um, so we're looking for this one. Um, they both happen to mean the same thing, but either ICAO or uh, METAR. Um, if you see multiple things listed, that's kind of what you're looking for. So variable, that's all VRB means. You might actually see something like BR uh, and you say, what the heck is BR mean? And that is um, missed. So why BR is missed, I don't know, but there it is. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, mention them in the comments. Uh, people have a tendency to answer and that's great because we have an awesome community here. You're gonna do great on the test. It's not really difficult if you know this stuff and you just have to take it apart one little piece at a time. So yeah, you have a great time, fly safe, and as always, be good to each other.